First up on this list from the House of Prada, I've got a couple fragrances and no, they're not the ones I'm holding. Now Prada Homme, which would be an excellent choice, but it's been talked about a bit too much, is a beautiful powdery iris violet woody fragrance that has incredible depth, quality ingredients, and again, would make an excellent choice, but I want to bring you something new. The same thing with Prada's Luna Rosa, an excellent fragrance. This right here is going to be aromatic, green, spicy, have a bit of lavender, a bit of musk, but it gets talked about quite a bit. Nope, the two fragrances I'm going to recommend are flankers of those originals I just showed you, and that's going to be Prada Lone Low and Prada Luna Rosa Sport. Now, Prada Lone Low oftentimes gets overshadowed by the original Lone. For good reason, that one's got quality ingredients. It's a classic fragrance. But this one right here, if you want something that's more for spring, something that's just lighter, fresher, cleaner, not as sweet, this is the one you want to grab. Powdery, warm, woody, with iris, with violet, with a bit of citrus, this fragrance is just incredibly refreshing. And if you feel, again, the original loam is just too sweet, this is what you want to grab. Top notes are going to be neroli and ginger. Middle notes, iris and amber. At the base, we're going to have sandalwood, cedarwood, and powdery notes. Sillage and longevity are great. And again, there are people out there claiming it's better than the original. Now, the fragrance I'm wearing today and the one I think gets looked over in the Luna Rosa line is going to be Luna Rosa Sport. This one right here, it's the vanilla note that really sets it apart. And it's not what you expect in a sport fragrance. Now, the top notes are going to be juniper berries and ginger. At the heart of this fragrance, we've got lavender. And the base notes here are going to be vanilla and tonka bean. Now, when you think of a flanker, especially a sport fragrance, you think it's going to be lighter than the original. That's not the case. This one's actually deeper and richer, and I think actually has better longevity, and I enjoy it more than the original. Now, gents, if you've ever worn a fragrance that nobody notices, I mean, seriously, you put on 10 sprays and no one seemed to pick it up, do me a favor, smash that like button. Or if you've worn a fragrance and you put on way too much and you made people cough, yeah, hit that like button as well. Now, at this point, you're saying, come on, Antonio, you're breaking my wallet. You've shown me over $1,000 worth of fragrances. That's true. And it could be even worse because you could buy some of these fragrances and say, Antonio, you were completely wrong. Why in the world did I buy a full bottle? I now got to give this stuff away because I can't return it. Well, gents, that's why I love today's sponsor, Scentbird, because they make it easy for you to date a fragrance before you commit. Gents, if you haven't heard of Scentbird, you need to go check them out. They're a subscription fragrance service. What this means is that they've got hundreds and hundreds of different fragrances on their website that you can try out before you commit to a full bottle. And gents, when it comes to selection, they've got tons of options. In fact, all the fragrances I'm talking about in today's video can be found over on their website. Dunhill, Prada, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, Hugo Boss, Bulgari, Bentley, Issey Miyake, Burberry, John Varvatos. And gents, the way it works is pretty simple. You're going to go over to their website and you're going to look at all the selection. Or you can take a quick quiz and they will point you in the direction of fragrances that they would suggest for you. Once you sign up for the service, you're going to receive a 30-day supply of the fragrance that you choose in just a really convenient travel sprayer. Now, these vials are a really solid size. We're talking enough for over 120 sprays. That is a solid month supply so that you can try the fragrance. You can really see how it reacts on your skin before you go out there and decide to commit to a full bottle. And if that's not enough for you, you can actually upgrade to get two to three bottles every single month if you want to try more options. And the fragrances they've got on their website, a single bottle can cost $150 to $500. So, for $16 a month, the Scentbird subscription service is a deal. That being said, I want to make sure you get the best deal on the web. So, guys, when you use that link in the description of today's video, you're going to save 55% off your first month. That means for $7, you can try their services. And let's talk about the discovery aspect. As a guy that has a lot of fragrances, what I love is being able to try new niche fragrances that I never would have gotten my nose on. Just this month, I received Atlas by to me. I also received Hermetica's Vertical Oud. And just in time for the warm weather, I received Maritime for Him by Tommy Bahama. So, gents, if you want to reduce the risk of buying a whole bottle of a fragrance that you end up not liking, guys, that's why I love Semper. They make it so easy just to try a fragrance out before you commit to a full bottle. And again, gents, to get the best deal on the web, use that link in the description of today's video to go over to Scentbird and again, to try a fragrance, to date a fragrance before you commit. Now, let's move over to the classic Italian house, Dolce & Gabbana. You got tons of options here. You can go with the classic Port Homme. This one's been out for a long time. Still, it's a classic scent that actually can be worn in the spring, but incredibly versatile. Is it going to be my best choice though? No, you may want to look at the light blue, especially if you're in a hotter area down in South Texas. Although light blue can be underwhelming in terms of its performance. So, in that case, I would have you look at 
Oh, intense light blue. Still, again, it's under Dolce & Gabbana, the house there. And this one right here is amazing. Though for me up here in Wisconsin, where we get a little bit colder springs, for me, I lean towards Intenso. This one is underrated, not really talked about, and is, in my opinion, just one of the best from Dolce & Gabbana. Now, the top notes for Intenso are going to be lavender, water, basil, marigold, and geranium. The middle notes, tobacco, hay, clary sage, mopal accord, and bran. The base notes, sandalwood, cypress, musk, amber, and labdanum. And let's be honest, with notes like hay, come on, you're thinking, do I want to smell like a barn? I don't know. There was just something about this. It's very similar to the original, just spicier deeper, richer, and I absolutely love it. Maybe if you're a more mature guy, I think that this is going to work for you. You younger guys, maybe you want to stick with the light blues. That's probably going to be more crowded pleasing and something that you're going to like more. That being said, if you've already got Intenso, if you know you like deeper, richer fragrances, and yes, you've already got the one, which is great for the fall and the winter, then check out the one EDP Intense. With top notes of cardamom, neroli, and cypress, middle notes of cashmeron, benzoin, neroli, clary sage, and the base notes of leather, neroli, patchouli, and labdanum. And don't get me wrong, this EDP Intense, yeah, definitely can be worn in the fall, in the winter, but I think it can still be pulled off in the spring because of the neroli notes, of that lighter beginning, but then it goes right into the cardamom. It's incredibly sweet, addictive. This isn't going to have as much longevity as I would have liked. That being said, it is just a beautiful banger fragrance that if you want something strong, something that just is deeper, richer, and something that's going to be a little bit different than all the lighter fragrances most guys are wearing during the spring, this is what you want to grab. Now, this next one, I almost forgot it was a Dolce Gabbana straggler, and that is K. Now, this one gets panned all the time. I think people were expecting too much of it. I mean, when it's K, it's got a crown on it. People are thinking, like, king of fragrances. It's not that. This is just a versatile workhorse fragrance. It's strong. It's clean. It's masculine. It's got a bit of citrus in this. This is just light. It's got, you know, the aromatic with it. This is, yeah, just incredibly versatile. It's not going to stand out, not going to win any awards. But for a guy that wants a go-to no-brainer fragrance, that isn't overpowering, this could be it. Top notes are juniper berry, citruses, blood orange, and Sicilian lemon. Middle notes, pimento, lavender, clary sage, and geranium. Base notes, vetiver, cedar, and patchouli. And the perfumer, Natalie Lorson, she is top notch. So the ingredients, everything in this is solid. Again, it gets panned a bit, so that's good for you because if you find it and you like it, less people are going to be wearing it. A solid, versatile spring pick. Next up on this list, gents, let's talk about spring fragrances from the house of Dunhill. Two options here. You can go with the classic icon, which is a neroli citrus bomb and great, especially if you have warmer springs. But for most of you guys, what I'm going to recommend is icon racing. Now, what I like about Icon Racing is that this is a more complex fragrance than the original Icon. So, it's going to start off with that strong citrus the first couple hours, and then it's going to get into the musk. It's going to get into the woody. It's just got a really silky dry down, and that's what I like about this fragrance. It's a little bit more complex than the original Icon, and for a cooler spring, for a spring that, yes, the temperature changes like here in Wisconsin, I think that this one is absolutely perfect. Top notes for Icon Racing are going to be grapefruit, cardamom, bergamot, Middle notes, orange blossom, lavender, pepper. Base notes, musk, guaiac wood, vetiver. Longevity and projection are both moderate. And again, what I like about this is the complexity. You've got that little bit of spice in there. It tickles the nose. An excellent spring choice. Next up, we've got the House of Versace. Actually, one of the better deal houses out there, I think, in terms of projection, longevity. If you want fragrances that are going to last, fragrances that are going to get you noticed, check out the House of Versace. Now, Eros is one of their flagship fragrances, especially if you're going to the club. You've probably heard of this one. I've talked about it many times. A solid pick. If you want a vanilla bomb, you want something sweet, something's going to get compliments, but unfortunately, every other guy is going to be wearing it, then yeah, check out Eros. Mana Fresh, same thing on the summer side. This thing's going to get you compliments. It is you know, incredibly versatile. You got the citrus mixed in with just the oceanic notes. Uh, just, I think, a solid, aromatic, woody, beautiful, citrusy fragrance that is highly regarded. That being said, I'm not going to put either of these on this list. Nope. Instead, I'm going to go with Versace's Eros Flame and Versace's Dylan Blue. For me, this is a spicier version of Eros that's a little bit more versatile and isn't so much in your face. Top notes are mandarin orange, black pepper, chinado, lemon, and rosemary. Mill notes, pepper, geranium, rose, 
base, vanilla, tonka bean, Texas cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, and oak moss. For me, it's the chinado mixed in with the spice and the fact that it, again, isn't as loud as the original arrows, but still has a lot of the DNA. It's a crowd pleasing. That vanilla just makes it sweet. A solid pick if you want something just, yeah, it's going to be more for going out during the spring. Now, Versace Pour Homme Dylan Blue, this is a whole nother beast altogether. If you want something that, again, is going to get you compliments, but isn't going to be in the Sauvage line, isn't going to be in the Creed line, but still is something that can hold its own, check out Versace's Dylan Blue. At the top, we've got bergamot, grapefruit, water notes, and fig leaf. In the middle, we have ambroxan, patchouli, black pepper, violet leaf, and papyrus. At the base, we have incense, musk, tonka bean, and saffron. Now, this fragrance has been compared to Bulgari's Atlantique, to Sauvage by Dior, Blue de Chanel by Chanel. I'd have to say that it is different though. It's the mix in with the citrus, with the smoothness, the ambroxan is strong with this one. That being said, it's not as overpowering as Sauvage. Uh, it's a little bit more edgier than Blue de Chanel. And uh, yeah, a solid pick if you're getting into blue fragrances. And if you're not familiar with what blue fragrances are, it's worth trying this one out just to see if you like it. Now let's jump over to the House of Burberry. And I could have gone with Touch. This one I've talked about multiple times, a solid fragrance. You've got the ozonic notes, makes a little bit of spicy, aromatic, just really a fresh, clean ozonic. Uh, so this one, very airy. This, again, a workhorse classic fragrance. You can't go wrong with it. But instead, I'm going to recommend the classic, Burberry for Men. Now, Burberry for Men has actually been out for over 25 years. It's aromatic, it's woody, it's spicy. This is a classic masculine fragrance that isn't dated. Top notes are going to be mint, lavender, bergamot, thyme, middle notes, cedar, sandalwood, geranium, jasmine, oak moss, base notes, musk, vanilla, and amber. Longevity and sillage are decent. This is one of those OG fragrances that doesn't smell old. It actually smells relatively fresh and it's going to set you apart from all the other guys out there wearing those sweet smelling fragrances. This one is more classic masculine and I think can be pulled off by a guy in his 20s, 30s or a guy even in his 60s. Next up from the House of Bulgari, we have Wood Neroli. Top notes are Neroli and Bergamot. Middle notes, Orange Blossom, Virginia Cedar, Cypress Oil. Base notes, we have Wood, White Musk, Ambergris, Amber and Leather. As the name implies, this is going to be a floral, woody fragrance, but what you don't expect is the citrus at the top, which actually goes away pretty quick. So it's going to be the florals, that neroli, which really sticks around and hence in the name. And I think it's perfect for spring. If you're a guy and you like the smell of neroli, then you're going to go for this and the dry down is solid. You've got the various woods. You've got a little bit deepness there, but overall, this is more of an aromatic, I would say floral type scent. Next up, let's talk about the house of Issei Miyake. This one flies under the radar for most people but they've got a very distinct bottle shape. Uh, the designer out of Japan mixed in with the French. I'd have to say that, yeah, it's a very interesting, beautiful combination. And for their summer fragrance, their fragrance that really put them on the map, which is Lotusse Pour Homme, this one right here is Yuzu. If you're not familiar with that note, this is a type of citrus that just has longevity. The issue with most citrus fragrances during the summer is that they're gone within a couple hours. This one is going to give you eight hours plus. Now, all Issey Miyake fragrances in general are relatively lighter. They're not going to have anything that's overpoweringly deep. That being said, if there is one that's probably going to be the darker, rich one that's perfect for winter is going to be the Nuit de Se. This one right here, it's classic. It's solid. It's been around for a while. You can check out the reviews on it. Uh, wood on wood. I personally love this one, but I do think it's got an issue that you've got to put a lot on. So, I'll usually go with 10 sprays on that one. That being said, for the spring, I'm going to go with something with a bit more amber in it, something that's a little bit spicier, still has the citrus in it, and that's going to be Lotusse Pour Homme Intense. So, the top notes on this fragrance are going to be Yuzu, Bergamot, Sweet Orange, and Mandarin Orange. Middle notes, Nutmeg, Lotus, Cinnamon, Cardamom, and Saffron. Base notes, Incense, Papyrus, Ambergris, Benzoin, and Amber. So, the perfumer that put this together, Jacques Cavalier, this guy is a French master and you have to hand it to him because this is one of the more difficult fragrances on this list. And I don't recommend you blind buy it. Again, try Scentbird. That's why I put him as a sponsor. This one is on there because what it does is it mixes that yuzu, that citrus in with the darker notes, the incense, the amber, and you don't expect that. And it's a little bit hard to get your nose around. That being said, it's incredibly unique. I think is strong and masculine. I think it's an incredibly beautiful fragrance, especially when you understand what you're smelling. But yeah, just something that uh, you don't normally, you know, smell that combination of the citrus bright, then immediately going into that dark, 
rich. It's got good longevity, I think, and uh, projection though, so-so. That being said, I wear this more for myself. And if you're out there sweating, it uh, does project. Now, if that's not your cup of tea, you want something that's stronger, that's richer, that's heavier, that's boozy, you want to check out Bentley's Intense for Men. Now, Bentley Black Intense for Men, this is a solid fragrance as well, but it's going to be powdery. It's going to be smoother. It's going to have, what is it, the, the violet in this. So, again, a solid fragrance if you like powdery fragrances. But this one right here, okay, so it's a really, it's not listed as a note, but when I smell this one and I put it on, I smell Dr. Pepper. Anyone else from Texas out there? Dr. Pepper was the official drink, it seems, of Texas, at least growing up in the 80s and 90s. And uh, I smell it. That being said, it dissipates pretty quick and it becomes something that's more of an alcoholic smell to it. I've seen a lot of people describe this as they imagine what a on top of his game, CEO would wear into a board meeting. Yeah, it would be this. And let me be clear, you're not going to smell like an alcoholic. It's the incense, the woody notes, the amber that actually help to dry that down. That being said, this is going to have staying power. It is a strong fragrance. This thing's going to get eight plus hours and projection is pretty darn good. You're talking two feet probably for the first few hours after that, it's going to be projecting a foot for like a day. Top notes here are black pepper, bay leaf, bergamot, middle notes, rum, woody notes, cinnamon, clary sage, African geranium, base notes, incense, leather, benzoin, patchouli, and cedar. And again, this is a fragrance a lot of people say they either love it or hate it, but everyone seems to describe this as what a millionaire would wear. So, hey, you know, if you're heading towards that route, then why not pick this one up? Now, this next fragrance, Moschino's Toy Boy, I think is a great spring pick, but some of you guys have said to me before, Antonio, this one is too much. And we're talking, this one has floral notes, rose notes. It's got a musky fragrance, a little bit of spice in there, but this one right here is a strong strong, can be overpowering fragrance, but I think it's still a great spring choice for a guy that wants to announce himself. If you're into floral notes, if you've always wanted to try, hey, can a man pull off rose? I think you can with this fragrance right here. I find it absolutely beautiful, but if you disagree or you agree, you think, can men wear rose? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to hear from you. So, what video to watch next? We're talking about choking people out. Guys, this is how you properly wear a fragrance. So many guys make mistakes when they're wearing fragrances. They put on too much or not enough or they spray it in the wrong places. Guys, I've got you covered with this video right here where I explain exactly how to do it. Seriously, it's a good one. Go check it out.